Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Hall and Museum Trust Incorporated. That started in 2000. Um, actually, it started in 1998, but it officially took over the operation, the maintenance, just everything about this memorial in 2000. The building itself was built in 1910 by Allegheny County uh, in honor of the Civil War veterans and from Allegheny County. And all these plaques that you see uh, go all the way around the, uh, the first level here. Uh, over 25,000 names of Allegheny County Civil War veterans are on those. So that's what it was originally built for. And then over the years, with all the different conflicts that the United States was in, uh, that we've been in, um, it just evolved into a memorial that honors all military men and women for all, from all branches of service. And in 2000, the nonprofit trust took over because the county needed help. Um, they couldn't finance it anymore. They couldn't, they, basically, they just couldn't take care of it. And uh, it was a, a dream of some veterans who were on the board of managers here at the time and the director at the time. Um, they felt that if it was operated by uh, a private individuals, private company, um, that that's what would help it survive. And we now raise our own money um, by renting the facility. That's one of our main ways and also through grants and the help of the public as much as we can. As we walk around, uh, I know you said you haven't been here in a while. Most people who haven't been here, um, obviously most people who haven't been here ever aren't going to appreciate what it was and what it is today. Uh, and when I say what it was, I mean when it was in its low points. Um, in the 90s, it wasn't, there was water leaking, paint was peeling, lights were half off, half of the bulbs were gone. So uh, several million dollars have, has gone into it, including uh, air conditioning, uh, central air conditioning now. So that helps with us, with our uh, fundraising through our, uh, our rentals because it's a very, very comfortable place, very beautiful place to have really any kind of event. Weddings almost every weekend. Uh, we have a large 2,300 seat auditorium. Um, we have a lot of business seminars here and those are all rented. Um, but we also use the facility for veteran organizations and, and a lot of uh, different events that, that uh, both either support veterans or just honor veterans. The, the most important thing to me that I find, the most significant thing about the museum itself is it's personal. The items that you see were donated to the hall, starting with Civil War veterans up through uh, artifacts that we have. I shouldn't call them artifacts yet, they're not. They're um, donated pieces of equipment and personal, uh, personal belongings from the service members themselves. So along with looking at a uniform or a, a flag or um, a, you know, a, a, a letter, um, there's a story that goes with it. And that's what we like to tell because that's what, this, that's what we feel soldiers and sailors in our mission uh, says that. We need to educate the, the public about our military men and women and the sacrifices they make. So you won't come here and see um, something that the Army uses all the time that you could see in any Army museum or an Air Force museum. Um, you won't see something that's just dedicated to you know, pilots. You're going to see those kind of things from you know, different branches of service and, and, the, and the different uh, specialties, um, but there's going to be a story that goes with it. And that's where you start to really become intrigued about what, you, what you're seeing and what you're feeling. You know, there's a, there becomes a, a connection. It's not just a, a replica necessarily. Um, it's an actual item that was worn, found, used, written home about. And to me, that's, that's the most significant thing because it really personalizes what you're seeing. One of the things you want to do is just come and see the museum. That's one aspect of the building. Actually, to me, it starts from the outside. You, if you walk up to the building from our, from our steps in the front um, and really take in what you're seeing and realizing why it was built in the first place, it sort of sets the tone 
for what you're going to experience when you come inside. Um, but everybody who comes here comes for different reasons. And as I mentioned er earlier, the, the rentals that we have, um, we have a lot of graduations here. And there have been thousands and thousands of high school and college students that have graduated in our auditorium. And that's probably all they know about soldiers and sailors, that it's an auditorium, because they walked through the front door, maybe lined up in the halls, and then went into the auditorium, had their commencement exercises, and then took some photos outside and left. Never saw any of the museum, never saw the ballroom, never realizing that where they were is a place where veterans of the Civil War actually sat and assembled when the place when uh, Soldiers and Sailors first opened. You can, you can come in wanting to see these military artifacts and focus on those for hours and hours. Or you may be an architect or have a, 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 you know, something special in your, uh, in, of interest in just the building itself. And Henry Hornbossel was a famous architect who built this, designed this building and many of the buildings in Pittsburgh. Um, so you could come and see that. Or you, if you love concerts or shows, check out the, the auditorium. Um, the ballroom, is. if we go upstairs, you're gonna see what a grand ballroom that it is. And you, same thing though, someone may come in for that reason. They're coming in for a, a wedding upstairs. Never gonna see the auditorium, never gonna see the artifacts. And that's okay on one hand, because you can only do so much. But what we hope people do is if they are coming in for any one of those three things, they at least get a taste and a touch of, of the other things so that they are here to see the museum and they're in a position where they can rent and use the building for their for a program or some conference that they may be in charge of corporation so to speak um, they'll consider us or if they're here for a wedding they come back again and they see the museum and they realize what a great place that it is and all of those things will generate awareness number one but also we feel a, a connection, uh, which is what we need. We need to connect with people so they understand what goes on here and they can help support us. And the main way they can support us, obviously, is financial. Anything that we can bring in financially goes right back in to all the programs we have, maintaining the building, creating more displays, telling the stories that we, that we uh, want to tell. But there's other value. There's, there's other ways you can, you can help us out. We do get volunteers just spreading the word about this place. It's, we joke about it, we kind of consider it a, uh, I want to say a best kept secret, but to me that's something that you want to keep secret. You know, this is our best kept secret, we want to keep it from you, it's just the opposite. Unfortunately, it's, it's a treasure that is somewhat secretive because people don't know what it is.